seconds away on this Studio 5 special. Exclusive interviews at Christian Music's biggest tour. It's an exciting look at Winter Jam 2018. Welcome to Studio 5. Spring may be around the corner, but winter's biggest Christian concert tour is still going strong. And we are your all-access pass with a hit-making lineup of artists. So let's not waste a minute and begin your special look at Winter Jam 2018 with its founder's new song. One step at a time for now, just keep your feet on the ground. Don't lose your way chasing the crowd. It's where your road begins, don't stop, don't settle in. Just tell yourself there's something more than this. Just tell yourself there's something more than this. This is more than 20 years old now. Is this what you envisioned? Well, you know, we really started Envision one night of just <laughs> trying to do a concert where everybody could afford to come. Mm -hmm. You know, we'd heard that people couldn't afford to come to Christian concerts. And mm -hmm. uh, they would go to the bookstores and maybe meet artists for book signings back in the day. Mm -hmm. and, but they would never be able to afford to come because they had a family and they had five, there's five of them or whatever. Mm -hmm. So the thought was, what if we made it so everybody could afford to come? I wonder how many people would come then. Because Christian music wasn't being played in arenas. Yeah. It was being played in churches and small auditoriums. And so we rented an arena and we charged $3. And it turned out they packed it out. 6,500 people came and more people couldn't get in. And so uh, that's kind of began to start. We got real brave next year and did two of those. Mm -hmm. uh, and it happened again. So things multiplied. And this year we're at 56. So. Uh, the money's gone up a little bit, but uh, that's still the goal is everybody gets to come. It's still cheaper than any other concert you're going to hear. Right, you're right. Gonna, what do you think of the makeup this year in terms of who's on the roster? You know, we never know when we set out to do this. There's always a list of about, what, Ed, 30 or 40 people that we consider and talk about. And we never know what the final recipe is going to be for Winter Jam for the lineup. And every year it just kind of surprises us how cohesive the night, even with all the different music genres, just how cohesive the night becomes, you know, thematically and musically. And it's a lot of fun. I, I say every night, I feel like it's the most unified night mm -hmm. in that city, wherever we are, uh, because the body of Christ comes together. There's so many different musical styles, so many different ethnic groups, so many different denominations. And here we are worshiping the Lord together, singing together. It's just a beautiful picture of what Christ prayed for. You know, it's the unity of the body. So, mm -hmm. and, and this year, is, is there's nothing disappointing at all to me about this year. There's great new artists and the artists that we love, mm -hmm. uh, that we're excited to bring back out. Uh, they're, they're all at the top of their game. So it's a wonderful night. It's a lot of fun. And, and it's also just a great night of worship. All those things that you really hope and pray are a part of Winter Jam mm -hmm. are there this year, so it's exciting. So I'm sure you've heard stories of lives being changed by virtue of coming in here. This year, we've uh, had two people email us and message us about how God literally rescued them from suicide um, because of, of the, how he uses Winter Jam. There's a lady and her family who got a phone call. She was literally preparing to take her life because she felt so hopeless. Mm. And she got a phone call from a radio station and said, congratulations, you've won tickets to Winter Jam. Wow. And so she came, she brought her son and her husband and, and um, her two sons rather, and, and stayed to the last minute and thanked us and said, this was a real turning point in my life. I feel like God orchestrated this entire thing. And it just so happened that if you're a radio winner, you, the first person you meet is our tour pastor, wow. who's a great counselor and prayer warrior and just so nurturing and such a healer himself. So he, the perfect guy. So he spent the night just pouring into her life. And I told that story from stage just briefly. And a, and a young lady sent me a message and said, That's, do you tell that story every night? Because I was that person and I was in the audience. And when you said that, I realize that God redeems people who are broken and feel like there's no hope. So we get those stories, and to be honest, we never get tired of hearing those stories. Mm -hmm. And we, we've heard many over the years, and they're all as fresh and exciting to us uh, because we love you. You ask us about Winter Jam, and it is a community, but it's a community of ministry. Mm -hmm. So the star of Winter Jam is, are none of these artists that you've heard of and that you love and who are notorious, if you will. But the star of Winter Jam is the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the difference. It's a night of worship, and it's a night where we push people toward Him and we lift Him up. You know, that's the heart of Winter Jam. It always has been. That's New Song's heart, and that's the heart of this tour. So you leave here knowing that. We, we do our best to get out of the way and to do our best 
physically, musically, but also to do our best to promote Jesus at Winter Jam. And because when he's lifted up, he draws people to himself. Everybody say, I am a Christian. New song began Winter Jam in 1995 and have no plans of slowing down. Up next. To the one who holds the stars. Winter Jam backstage gets unleashed with Skillet. It. It's, it's, it's unleashed, Joy. <laughs> And welcome back to this special edition of Studio 5. Christian rock band Skillet is making its third headlining appearance at Winter Jam. With Dove Awards, Grammy nominations, and Billboard Awards, the band has been entertaining fans since 1996. And band members sat down with us before rocking the Winter Jam stage in Nashville, Tennessee. This is a 40-some city tour. How's it going and why are you guys doing this? <laughs> <laughs> why, would, why would we do this to ourselves? Yeah. That's the feeling I got when you said that. That's a great question. <laughs> <laughs> we love Winter Jam for lots of reasons. Um, probably the first being, it's, uh, I think it's fair to say, there's just a lot of people coming. So here I am, left in at my to the one who holds the stars. 2017 has been described as a landmark year. How do you top it in 2018? 2016 was our 20th anniversary for mm, Skillet, which wow. is crazy. So we never dreamed we'd be doing it this long. So I think that every year, <laughs> every year is like is borrowed time. Every year's a landmark. It is a landmark. <laughs> The road hasn't killed us yet. You know, we haven't killed each other. My wife still likes me, nice. I think. Right? She still likes me. Okay. Anyway, uh, I will say for me, 2017 was literally my favorite skillet year we've ever had. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I think the issue is just feeling that God still called us to do it. You know, there's always that God is this, you know, in the next record. Are we still meant to be doing this? Are we still being relevant for you? Is it because music can be. Um, Entertainment can be all about you, mm -hmm. you know, and you, you want to know that you're being used by God, that there's a reason you're still in it, mm -hmm. and that it's not just about building your own kingdom and your own art. And God has kept saying, yes, still do it. This tour ends, and then you are going to join for King and Country for the Joy Unleashed Tour. Yeah. What can you share about that? Unleashed. Yeah, <laughs> Joy! <laughs> <laughs> Every time I hear it, yeah, <laughs> you know, we're excited. I mean, we have, the funny thing is, is that Corey and I, we have known the Smallbone Brothers. I which, love them. Oh, they're great, I Joel and Luke. Mm -hmm. We've toured together on Winter Jam twice, mm -hmm. and always said one day we'll do like a, a tour together. So we're finally doing it, and very excited about it. So I think it's going to be a really fantastic tour. Going to do some things on stage that people have never seen, but right. with the two acts, mm -hmm. you know, and maybe never see before, depending on if we ever do another tour again. So that'll be fun. So we go from this straight to that, and then straight to uh, straight to Europe after that, you know, for another tour. So we don't stop. <laughs> we, you cannot stop it. It's, it's, it's unleashed. It's unleashed. Joy. <laughs> ah! Be sure to see if Skillet is unleashing joy in a city near you. This year's Winter Jam brought some new faces and new genres to the stage. Hip-hop artist KB from Lecrae's Reach Records perform and is continuing on the tour. He sat down with us before grabbing the mic in Nashville. Your latest album is Today We Rebel. Yeah. Why? What are we rebelling against? Today yes. We Rebel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That title comes from a culmination of uh, 
a culmination of experiences and writings that I've sort of given myself to. I think one with Martin Luther King, who's uh, who said that to love is to be radical. That there is uh, to say that Jesus wasn't a radical is to misunderstand Jesus. Uh, and so when I when I realized that. If you're to love truly and genuinely, it will be met with a sense of persecution and pushback. And in that moment, we had to ask ourselves if we're free or not. If, we are, if we've been freed to, to live in, as kingdom people in this world, when opposition comes, we meet, we meet that opposition with rebellion. Yeah. I think we hear a lot of that in the music. I'm thinking of the the track New Portrait. There was a moment on my album that was inspired by a conversation I had with a brother on the south side of St. Petersburg who was telling me that Christianity and African uh, heritage are actually in contradiction. New Portrait is an important song for me um, because I'm I had a conversation with a gentleman um, before, while I was making the album. It's a part of this black nationalist group in the neighborhood that I grew up in. And uh, we were having a great conversation and I mentioned to him that I was a Christian and he about fell out of his seat. He was like, man, you seem to be smarter than that. Like, why would you, why would you go and do that? <laughs> wow. <laughs> like you've been brainwashed. <laughs> and, uh, and you know, my posture was, well, I, I have been washed. And I've been washed by the blood of Jesus and I'm not unaware of the attacks on, you know, ethnic people that would claim Christianity as their own. I, I'm not unaware of, of some of the historical failures of uh, folks who are part. I'm Southern Baptist, a part of the Southern Baptist Convention, which is Southern Baptist Convention was started in response to those who want to take away their slavery. So I, I'm not unaware of that, but I'm also aware that the Jesus of the Bible transcends and goes back far beyond. I saw recently an article said, if you're looking for an ancient African religion, try Christianity. I think that one of the biggest issues facing us is the politicizing of our faith, that we begin to ask questions like, are you Republican? before I align with you? Or are you Republican before I love you? Are you Republican before I consider you a solid believer? I think that's a tremendous misstep for the people of God in this nation. I feel a responsibility to lead and to challenge and to bring redemption, I think, to uh, issues that have been largely mismanaged uh, by people. I think at the end of the day, if, if even if I deal with brothers and sisters who are who are blinded by bias and politics and racism and white supremacy, uh, many of them, Christ has died for them. I want to be a part of shepherding people into knowledge, into wokeness, mm -hmm. um, into a vision of the kingdom that's more succinct with scripture. Um, and that actually excites me. Let's talk about Donald yeah. Trump. Let's, let's talk about race. Let's talk about racism because God has something to say about it. And we should not let those things get us to a point where the blood of Jesus is secondary and our political positions become primary. I'm a big fan of KB on and off the stage. Be sure to keep your eyes and ears on Studio 5 as we track what's new and next in his music career. Still ahead. Windsor Jam veterans building 429 joined Studio 5. We played it the first night and I was like, man, I really like that. I mean, just enough to change it. And the future of Winter Jam, Jordan Feliz. This is crazy, man. It's pretty unreal. And welcome back. Open the pages of the Bible to Ephesians 4.29 and it reads, Let no corrupt talk come out of your mouth, but only such as is good for the building up. That verse inspired the name of the Dove Award winning rock band Building 429. And Studio 5 has an exclusive interview with the Winter Jam veterans. <laughs> guys recording and touring for as long as you have, I would imagine that coming up with what the set's going to be yeah. that's going to best satisfy that's right. the fans who've come to see you, how do you arrive at that? Honestly, pretty much when we start negotiations on whether we're going to do it or not, mm -hmm. we go to the lab and we start thinking about like, all right, if we have you know, 20 minutes, we're going to do this. If we have 25, we're going to, if we have 20, 18. 
And, and then you do, you know, we've done probably 10 versions of that set. And then we came out and we played it the first night and I was like, man, I really like that. I mean, mm. just enough to change it. <laughs> you know what I mean? The last album was Unashamed, right? and that was described as deep late night conversations about God, faith, culture, yeah. all set to music. Why that description? Well, I, mean, I would say, number one, that, that the four of us, we all, we are all, um, we don't live in the same town, which is really a cool thing. We have different perspectives, we all go to different churches, and we're all the leaders of our households. What we came down to was that our faith um, really um, should be paramount, it should be the focus of our lives and then outside from that should be all of our decisions and the way that we act and the way we move and all that kind of stuff. But we just wanted to really kind of go, you know what, what this world desperately needs is somebody who is willing to step up and say, look, I have faith in a living God who changes hearts and changes souls and gives me a reason to believe that the best is still yet to come. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I submit to you, we will find the same God who was seated on the throne when he created the heavens and the earth will still be seated on the throne victorious at the end of all the chaos. Now you are, are I guess, playing with a new single on this tour, correct? Yeah, we're playing a new song, right? Yeah. yeah. So so This Place, is that the yeah, song? Yeah, that's right. What can you tell me about that, that specific song? The song, uh, one of the things that we like about it is that it, it talks about what happens when the, when the body of believers gather together, right? And it talks about the reality that this is holy ground and that everything can change here tonight. Hearts can change, minds can change, opinions can change. Um, and, and I think, uh, you know, the trajectory for eternity can change for a person as well. And so um, I love playing it because at first people don't know really what the song is, but by the time we get around to about, about halfway through the first chorus, and then once we hit that second chorus, it's, people got it and it's fun to sing. You said you've been working on your album for about two years now. Yes. So where do we stand? Yeah, it'll be done in 2025. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know, man. We've, we, it's funny. We've, we really are um, trying hard to, to just make the best record of our career. We really are not trying to manufacture this. We really want to, we just want to dig deep and, and, and write the best record possible. Not because um, of anything other than we, we would like to leave a legacy of creativity that mirrors um, just how awesome our God is, right? And we'll be sure to update you on the release date for that new album. This next artist is making his first appearance at Winter Jam, making waves with his single titled The River. Jordan Feliz is Studio 5's One to Watch. I know a place where we can go to lay the troubles down eating your soul. You were an automobile valet before becoming a singer? I was. <laughs> I was. It's actually pretty surreal to play here because I used to like park cars literally two blocks over here. Are you serious? Yep. Yeah. And there were some nights when our lot would fill up where we have to park underneath uh, the convention center. So I'd have to run to the convention center to get in. It's just crazy, man. It's pretty unreal like to be like, oh yeah, I used to do that over there and <laughs> now I'm here. This is just crazy. So now you're on stage and you used to park cars. <laughs> literally. Literally. Two blocks. Yep. You were voted New Artist of the Year in yes. 2016. Yeah. That's yeah. a nice little stamp to, to, yeah. to begin. Yeah, it was it was pretty awesome, man. <laughs> I I did not see it coming at all. In my own life, took me from dusty roads into paradise. All of my dirt, all of my shame, drown in the streams that have made me born again. So your, your, your sophomore project is called yes. Future. Yes. It is coming out as you're on the Winter Jam tour. Yes. How are yes. you feeling doing that? Oh, uh, man, it feels awesome. I'm really excited about it. Um, I'm super, super amped that we're getting to like pre-sale it out here mm -hmm. and um, we're getting to play a new song live. So I feel like people are able to just get like a little taste of what it's going to be like. The message is really just about the fact that um, we don't have to have fear, give in to fear, anxiety, stress, whatever we're dealing with our, our, in our lives because um, the beautiful thing as believers that we have is that our future is found in the inheritance of God. If you could speak to a young person and give them a word of encouragement who may not be able to find their way right mm. now, 
um, not as blessed in their mind as you to have married, successful album, a oh, child. Man. What would you say to them in terms of getting on track? Well, I think one of the things that I would tell my younger self, which I guess is the person I'm talking to, is just don't sweat the small things in life. Make sure that your you know, mind and your heart are just constantly refreshed and in the right place. You know, stay in the Word. I mean, that's a lot of advice, but, you know, and I'm still learning how to do that. <laughs> Jordan's next album, Future, is out this month and available wherever music is sold starting March 23rd. Up next on this Studio 5 special. They look at the other and say, oh man, that guy needs Jesus. Oh, that girl needs Jesus. And so we say, man, can we meet at Jesus? Author Nick Hall brings a strong message to the Winter Jam stage and to Studio 5. And we are almost out of time for this special edition of Studio 5, so let's look ahead to what we're working on for you for next week. Dating Ch Jesus is so far out of your league. Winter Jam's never had a comedian before. He's walking on water. You're about to walk into Payless for some shoes, okay? The church takes a, a nice little digging when you when you get up uh, <laughs> from time to time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when it comes to Christian breakup lines, we got nothing. All things work together for good, but we ain't together and this ain't good. I feel like if there is any uh, ribbing or maybe roasting of the church or Christian culture, mm -hmm. I like to say it's not me pointing at you guys, it's me like shining a mirror at us. Like I'm in the front of it. Yeah. I'm like, look at us. <laughs> ah, shh. Let no unwholesome talk come out of your mouth. You know what, let's just listen to some music. I love Jesus. I think the local church is our only hope. That being said, <laughs> We do some weird stuff, you know? <laughs> we so, do some crazy Yeah, we do some crazy stuff. <laughs> That's a story you don't want to miss. Be sure to join us for that next week. Along with the award-winning roster of musicians, the voice of the next generation, pastor, evangelist, teacher, Nick Hall, also brought an encouraging message of the gospel to Winter Jam. So we're giving him the final word for this episode. Our world is, is going nuts. And uh, I think people are passionate about causes but I think our causes tend to divide us even more, right? It's like, I'm for this, which means I'm against that. I'm gonna rally for this, which means I'm rallying against that. And I think that Jesus uniquely stands in the middle, right? I, we, in our team, we call it the radical middle, right? And I think if it, you can think of an issue and you say people on both sides, so they look at the other and say, oh man, that guy needs Jesus. Oh, that girl needs Jesus. And so we say, man, can we meet at Jesus? You know, I just think Jesus is the great uniter. Uh, he shows us what friendship looks like. He shows us what reconciliation looks like. He shows us what love looks like. And I think there's something there that I think never before in our society have we needed the whole ministry of Jesus. Because I think we even segregate Jesus. You know, we say, oh, no, I'm, I'm passionate about this part, but not that part. And I just think, man, segregation, whether it's of race, of politics, of issues, of orientation, like all these things are dividing us and I think God invites us to come and he gives us an anchor in scripture. He gives us an authority in, in Jesus and a leader to look to. And so, man, I think in the time of division, never before have we needed a leader, you know, that we can trust. And I think Jesus is the only one. That is indeed a great final word for this Studio 5 Winter Jam special. Until next time, reach out and touch me at Ephraim Graham on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Snapchat. Also, be sure to check out Studio 5's Facebook page at Studio 5 TV to see the full interviews of all these Winter Jam artists. And then, be sure to come on back and see where Studio 5 takes you next week. Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs>